All right, all right, all right. Welcome to another edition of Shabbat Lounge. This is Matt and, and Jake here. And we are coming to you with part two in our Nailed to the Cross series, a look at Colossians. Right. This is, we're going to deep dive into Colossians 2, uh, continuing on from our part one. And this is part of the apologetic series that we do here at Sabbath Lounge. Uh, and those not familiar can find us where, Matt? If you Google Sabbath Lounge, we will pull up everywhere in all kinds of places, from podcasts to Twitter feeds to Facebook and uh, even the TikTok. That's what these kids today are doing, Jake. Lots yeah. of TikTok. But you won't find us dancing very much or singing songs. No. So we do Mostly a lot of getting this. pummeled by people, right? <laughs> Just getting pummeled by people. We're good at that. So... Uh, but we do appreciate you stopping by and appreciate any likes, comments, shares. If we've had some people leave shofars or horns in the comments, and we really appreciate that. That shows us that you really listened to us. Right. Uh, if you did that. So without further ado, part two of Nailed to the Cross. Right. Continuation and of Colossians chapter two. Colossians chapter two. Now we read through... <clears throat> Colossians 2, excuse me, mm -hmm. uh, in the last one. And I would recommend that you read Colossians 2 if you have not. Right. So if if you got this far and haven't read Colossians 2, you missed something. So uh, make that happen before we continue. So uh, we read through, and then we found that in Colossians 2.11, right, we see that the circumcision of Messiah puts off the body of sins of the flesh. What does that mean, Jake? Put off the sin of the body of the flesh? Put off, I didn't say put off the sin, put off the body of sins of the flesh. Right. So he's, uh, he's cleansed us from the sin, right? Cut That's, it off. So that is what he's, quote unquote, nailing to the cross, right? He's, that's what he put off of you was the sins of your flesh, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And what is sin? Not following Torah. Right. So as we continue, we come up with this question, what are the sins that Messiah takes off of us? So hmm. let's take a look at these sins. What are we talking about, Jake? The breaking of Torah commandments, just like we were saying. It's like we've read through our slides. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. And then... If you look at Galatians 2.18, we see, For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. So now that the law transgressing has been removed from us, we should not return again like a dog to the vomit. Right. So that's from and Second, that's Peter, Second Peter 2.22. All twos. Two, Second Peter 2.22. Yes. Yeah. So after... He's taken this body of sin off of us, right? Our transgression of Torah, then don't build again, just like you're saying it don't in go Galatians. Back to it. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's gross to go back to the vomit. Right. Don't He's do it. taken it off. If you build it again, you make yourself a transgressor. Sounds pretty simple. Mm -hmm. And there's no way that he could be talking about following the ways of God and compare it to a dog going to its vomit. There's, right. Was, there's no way he could say anything like that. Right. So can can the law be described as perfect and good and mm -hmm. righteous and life and the way? Mm -hmm. Is that vomit? Can't be. It's, that doesn't even make sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as we move on. So can... now that we know what he's not saying. Yes. Maybe we can figure out what he is. Yeah. So, uh, yep, with that background, take a more clear look at what Paul's saying in verse 14 through 17. This is, uh, these are kind of the big ones. All right. Verse 14, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us. He took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. So, Jake, is he saying the law is nailed to the cross or is he saying something else is nailed? To the cross. I think if we continue on, we'll see what okay. has been nailed to the cross. All right. So if you let's... remember, that's the premise that kind of gets this 
mm-hmm. study going because people come to you and say that. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. They'll take this one verse mm-hmm. out of the whole chapter. But while we're looking at the whole chapter. And uh, even the whole book. Yeah. Right. Then we can see a better picture of what he's actually saying. So this word ordinances that was against us is what was nailed to the cross. So it's important to understand what these ordinances are. Um, the word translated ordinances is dogma, and it's talking about to a public decree or decrees of men. Now, dogma isn't always contrary to Scripture. Right. So um, dogma just sounds like uh, not good, right? Right. It sounds <clears throat> like a bad thing for sure. But Yeah. It doesn't sound like uh, Torah. Right. So if we look in Acts 16, verse 4, we see this word. We, we don't see this word we see this concept Mm -hmm. play out because this is the apostles they get together and they declare a decree of what the followers should be doing but in this case in acts it's in line with what scripture Mm -hmm. is saying so they weren't decrees against believers but uh in general what it's talking about is a Mm man-made decree okay yeah so and that goes hand in hand with what we saw in verse eight they're following the traditions of man mm-hmm. well because you could even argue like we just read esther that there's a man-made decree in esther to celebrate purim mm-hmm. in honor of what happened there you know you could argue this would be like that right and it, it, that's not a bad thing right um but um but uh, but there are ways in which it's not always necessarily a bad thing but it's when when you put that in place of scripture or against what scripture says or contrary to scripture right so the point and that we're making here is what was nailed to the cross was these ordinances that were against us or dogmas of men okay it's some translations will even say god's law nailed you know or mm-hmm. was against us but when you go to the the Greek, that's not what they're what it's saying. Mm-hmm. So as we continue to jump into it, remember that it was the commandments of men that said Jews and Gentiles could not come together in the Torah. In fact, this is contrary to Torah. See Leviticus nineteen thirty four and Deuteronomy ten nineteen. So, but that was often taught. In fact, we see that later in Peter's vision that that was what some of these overly zealous people were practicing they were like i can't hang out with them they're gentiles right and people thought that way and and they were never supposed to think that way but they you know they were taught by men that this is what you do and they just did it right and if you look back at our discussion with uh uh david wilbur Mm -hmm. and we go into the difference of koinos and a kathartos and Mm -hmm. Uh, there was this idea of commonality that uh, uh, the Jews had. And that's this idea here of they couldn't go to uh, the Jews and the Gentiles couldn't come together. Um, and it wasn't the Torah that said that. So uh, so it's the commandments of men that are contrary to us that are nailed to the cross. And this is where Messiah takes back control of the principalities and powers that Paul talks about in verse 10. Remember I said we'd come back to this at the end mm-hmm. of... Uh, the last section, and this is kind of where it comes together, is he nails those principalities to the cross that were coming against us, and now we have the power to overcome that. And part of the reason they can come against us is we give them spiritual and legal authority to operate in our lives when we uh, practice these wicked wicked ways. Right. And, um, and, and that does need to be nailed to the cross. Right. And taken away. Right. So in verse 15 there, having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. So because the principalities and powers of men have been defeated, you can have courage to walk in, out your faith. And so the accuser, uh, Satan, Hasatan, he has nothing to accuse us for. If we, uh, you know, it, once we do this and once we allow our guilty, um, our, our, the, you know, our guilty actions to be nailed to the cross and taken away, um, 
you know, then he, if we don't do that, then he has legal authority to operate and accuse us. And rightfully so, we will be guilty as charged unless he uh, looks and sees the blood of Messiah on us. And, um, you know, but. Um, right. So this is, this is just, uh, uh, this section of scripture is where we should be going to show that uh, uh, the, our sin was up was put on the cross with messiah it's a it's showing that concept which mm -hmm. everyone's familiar with should be that right? should be yeah. yeah but and it is definitely not saying that the the law and the words of moses have been forever put on this cross and done away with right forever especially when you look at um the and we'll get into some more detail here but one thing we we don't really hit on too much in, in our presentation, but is worth uh, throwing in here is uh, uh, if you look at the millennial reign when he returns, and it is very clear about going up to Mount Zion to learn the Torah mm -hmm. and keeping Sabbaths and feast days. And if you don't, you know, you get no rain on your, mm -hmm. on your uh, nation. Um, so how could they be nailed to the cross? And then come back again. Mm -hmm. If they're nailed to the sense. cross, it's gone. It's mm -hmm. over. So they can't come back. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. And as we continue, you see this judgment. So, Jake, wh what about this? About people who th th explain this using Colossians 2.16, which says, Let no man judge you in meat or drink or in respect of a holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. So that's what the verse says. So then they'll say, see, we own to judge a man for the Sabbaths he keeps. You can even pick any day. Mm -hmm. It says right there, don't Messiah let is my anyone Sabbath. judge you in meat or in drink. Is he saying this to you, Matt? When Paul's writing this, is he saying, hey, Matt, don't let someone judge you in, in that Sabbath that you're not keeping. You can do it Sunday. I think he's de definitely not saying that, but, you know, he's saying that there are, uh, so when you think back, if you missed the beginning of this teaching, there were people who were pagans, if you will, Hellenistic <clears throat> Jews practicing man-made, made-up religions who celebrated new moon festivals, who celebrated Sabbath days. And so um, he's definitely, you know, speaking of... Um, of some of these guys here that um, you basically have these two camps coming together into one. And, and I think that part is part of what makes it confusing. Yeah. So, but so it's not who, confusing if you, his audience here mm -hmm. is new believers, right? Right. So he's saying, and they're surrounded by pagans, mm -hmm. right? They're pagans who are right? now looking down upon their noses at, you, you've, you've left us. What right. are you doing over there? Right. And now you have all these people that are uh, these new believers that are keeping Sabbath days and new moons, right? They're, who, they're formerly, who formerly did not. Right. And their friend, they're losing their friends. Just It's almost some of the same things some of us went through, but with churchianity. And, and they're losing their friends and family, and they're like, "What? Well, you're crazy. What are y'all doing? You yeah. Know, this, is, this looks weird. This is wrong. Y'all have lost your minds. Right. So he's saying, new believers, don't let anyone judge you, the new believer, when you start doing these things. Because, yeah. and we'll get into why. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's all in there. So, but I think that if you don't understand this element of what they were fighting in, in, this, in this Hellenistic piece of Colossians, and if you just take this, this piece out of context, it can look like, you know, that, that um, it, you know, like you said at the beginning, it, it, it's whatever you want to do, whatever day you want it to be. You right. Know, who are, you know, but, but that doesn't make sense with other things that Paul says. Right. So, um so we'll keep going on here and see what else we can find out. So what does it say here in 16? So we can correctly see verse 16 by remembering what we talked about with principalities and powers. 
and considering the following. Consider the following. Cliff's all about that. Consider the following. Yes, there was a uh, the following. there was a uh, scientist guy way back in the day before Bill Nye mm -hmm. making like black and white science videos, and he'd always say, "Consider the following." Oh. But uh, <laughs> point being, so Colossae is in Turkey, as we established, right? It's about eight hundred miles from Jerusalem. Hmm. Okay, so by so foot, get in my car. It's, it's a long way. Does it take me like eight, ten hours to get there? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. How fast are you driving? Maybe not fast enough. <laughs> so it's not necessarily this town full of Torah-following Jews. It's got a bunch of Pharisees and a bunch of uh, pagans, like we discussed. Right? And a but bunch of we Gentiles. Did, we did see that because of the temple tax records, there were Jews in this place. Right. So uh, so Paul is talking to the believers. This is kind of branching off what I said earlier here. But um, so remember this as we go into what we're talking about. Paul is talking to the believers in Colossae, telling them not to be discouraged when the Gentiles are judging them or the pagans are judging them for keeping things of Yah instead of the ascetic practices of the culture around them. Yeah. Just that simple. Yeah, and that's a good point. That if you're new to this, you this may be at a point where you may want to pause this and go, "What?" Because it, the first times that you hear this, it is kind of shocking because we've all heard for such a long time that this meant uh, something a little bit different. And uh, but when you put it in the context of what we know about the the, the pagan people groups here, it, then it kind of starts to make more sense. Yeah, and if you uh... <clears throat> Uh, it, it's definitely a paradigm shift kind of scenario here. You definitely have to say, okay, let me set aside how I've looked at it before, mm -hmm. and let me try to look at it a different way and see if it makes sense. Well, it goes back to what I keep saying it here lately, but the new wine skins. You know, mm -hmm. if you if you don't get new wine skins to hold your these new paradigms, you're going to have a hard time with some of these, and you just the, the old wine skin will not contain this this thinking when you when you start to see it this way. Right. So there are things here. Um, so this, so the little graphic here is that, uh, that they had these Hellenic dietary laws on meat consumption. So, so it's, it's not hard to find information about what the Hellenistic people, what they did, what they thought. And you will see that the part of this is food consumption but uh, so what, what do you, what do we have here? One through four, Jake, well, who is this talking about? Well, uh, let's see, not eating certain meats, setting apart Elohim's holy days, they're observing the new moons and they're keeping the Sabbath. That sounds like new believer. Mm -hmm. And so he, so all of those things they were supposed to do. There's nothing in any of this that says, uh, that tells them, Paul never says, hey, you're not supposed to do this. Uh, he supports in, in, in different aspects and different places, all the way from Acts to, uh, you know, all through Paul's writings, he supports all of, the, you know, keeping the, the Torah. Right. He doesn't ever come out and say, don't do this. Yeah. He says, walk as I walk, as mm -hmm. I walk, as Messiah walked. And then in uh, the end of Acts, you see him saying, I have not... I don't transgress yeah. the Torah. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> Paul is saying, let no unbelieving man judge you. He's not talking about being judged by the brethren and Messiah. And we'll get into detail in that in yeah. the next one. Yeah, that's good. So that comes to the end of our part two of Nailing to the Cross. Right. In our look at Colossians 2. So we uh, we still have another part to do here, and uh, if you if you missed any of the others, we encourage you to go back and listen, and please share this with others. Please leave us like a um, some kind of an emoji, like a horn or a shofar emoji, to let us know hey you did listen to us. Yep. Give but, us a comment, questions, questions. Yep. Any of that. But we appreciate you taking a minute out of your day to 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 listen to Sabbath Lounge, and this is Matt and Jake signing off.